Hey guys, so ho 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 and happy new year. 2022 should be interesting. Um, yeah, no doubt. So here is the plan. I've got a, a shop here. Well, it's a vacant warehouse space, but it's got that. And it's blowing some nice warm heat. Um, it's been really cold out in my part of the woods. It's been minus 30. Um, today's minus 25 and it's just no fun to work on a vehicle in those conditions So I've got this shop here for about six weeks now uh, in town. I got it to the end of January So I'm gonna do some mods to this thing and today I'm gonna do a couple things I'm gonna show you how to install lights on the bumper of this GX 470 Which isn't a great idea, but um, I got plans for that bumper. So it's temporary I'm also going to show you how you switch uh, the lights. I'm putting pencil beam lights on this. I'm going to show you how to switch them on with the high beam um, switch. And I'll show you why I'm doing that and how you do it with this. Uh, I think this is the same um, for Subarus. I think it's the same for a lot of vehicles. So you can probably use this to help you do that. And I'll show you why I'm doing it. So here's what I got going on. I've got these aux beam 7 inch uh, pencil beam lights and I'm gonna install them on the GX here and uh, we'll see how that goes. And there's my tools for today. I gotta to drill a couple holes, but uh, not a big deal. And let's get after it. So here's the bumper on the GX 470. And the problem with this bumper is, uh, there's lots of things wrong with this bumper as far as putting lights on it. This is just plastic. It's pretty rigid though. So I'm thinking it's gonna work. Again, this is temporary guys. I got a new bumper on the way. Um, the main beam for the bumper on the GX is down here you can't see it until unless I pull the bumper off I'm not gonna do that um, the main beam yes you know the thing you crash into things with is there so up here on the GX oops right here there's nothing there but plastic again it's pretty rigid um, you could probably make a bracket um, and mess around with it and, and do a better job than what I'm gonna do here today um, but you know what it's for me it's not worth it hopefully I'll have my new bumper in a month uh, maybe two months at the most and you know so this is going to be ditched i'm going to keep the lights but the bumper is going to be gone this is the harness uh ox beam gives you it actually comes with the kit and it's kind of weird and i'll show you why the plugs and everything else are great uh they're they're weather sealed everything's awesome uh, it comes with uh the relay which is awesome again everything's wired up nicely no problem this is your off on button uh this you'd have to feed into your car through the firewall and that's a bit of a thing to put through there man it's like the size of my thumb here's another look at the setup there's your relay there's your connection to the battery there's a fuse block and then you've got two wires going out that hook up to your lights and they give you tons of cable which is good and then this guy which turns it off and on but has power to it all the time or to the switch anyway that goes into the car um, again, it's kind of lumpy. There's a connector. Here's how this thing's supposed to be set up. Obviously, this isn't bolted down to anything. That's your relay. There's your positive, your negative hooked up. And I just plugged in one light. There it is there. And here's my switch. And uh, as I was saying before, this switch is always on. So when, even when you're out of the car, you know, it's not... Uh, hooked up to the ignition so it's this thing's always glowing I, I don't, I'm not a big fan of that and when you turn this on your lights go on so there they are um, now we got a green light so this is a little bit different than what you would think is going on so this is ground sided control or ground control to Major Tom um, what happens here is these lights have power to them all the time. So if you tap that power wire, your lights are always gonna be on. Um, so what you have to do is kind of reverse things up a bit here with the relay and have power going to your relay and then have your ground um, switch your lights on. And it sounds confusing. Actually, it kind of is. There's lots of weird stuff going on in the forums to get down to the, the bottom of it. So basically what happens is what's switching your lights on on your GX, um, your Lexus, your Toyotas, your Subarus, whatever, it's a ground control. So the ground, um, your lights have power to them all the time. And then when whatever light, high beam, low beam, gets the signal ground, then it turns on. So that's what we're gonna do with those guys. 
So here's what I did guys. I just popped this bulb out and what you've got to do is you can see where it came out right there and it fits in there. So what I did was I have a little test light and I grounded it and then I just checked these two terminals and one is hot and one is ground. You don't want the hot one. Um, this is reverse than you know probably what you're thinking. Um, that when these high beams, these high beams and low beams always have power on to them. Um, so if you tap that hot wire, um, your lights are always going to be on. You want to tap the ground because when the ground hooks up, that's when the lights are working. So I just found out which one's hot and the top one's hot. So I'm going to use the bottom one. So here's the standard everyday um, relay, and here's what you're looking at. Uh, those two red wires are going to my lights, uh, the new lights, and they're parked in 87. On the left is 86, which is all my grounds. There's four of them. I'll show you why I have four on this setup. On the right is my on-off button um, that would go into the cab, usually. That little red wire there. And the bottom is the 30, number 30, and that's my power, 12 volt, to the battery. So you see the ground here. All these grounds, including the ones from the lights, end up here. Um, they're all ganged up here. I have four ground wires on this system, and the reason being is uh, two are going uh, to the lights, one each, the new lights, of course. Uh, a lot of times those are just grounded to whatever, part of the car or whatever. In this case, these plugs have a ground and a power going to them, so that takes up two. Um, the third one goes to the switch. As I showed you, there's three um, lines going to that switch. And the fourth one is this guy here going to the battery, right? So that's this guy. So we're gonna get rid of one of these and I'll show you what's happening there. So I'm gonna try and make sense of all this fun stuff here. So here are the two um, cables, positive and negative, going to your battery. There they are right there. We are getting rid of this. Normally you'd use this, this is gone. So now we're gonna hook this up to your positive and um, that's it. So that's hooked up. Here's your switch. Your switch has that red wire there, and what's happening here is normally you click the button or your toggle switch in the cab, and it sends power to turn on the relay, to send power from the relay um, to the uh, lights. We're not gonna do that. What we're doing here is, because it's this negative system, um, we're gonna pop this red one out, and we're gonna hook it up to 12 volt as well. So red and red on 12 volt. Now this ground goes to that whole cluster of four. There's four ground wires, so I could use this ground, and put a T connector on it to the ground on the um, high beam light that we looked at. So basically when you flick the high beams on, it makes ground and this system works as well as my high beams. But this is kind of thin, uh, too thin. This gauge is kind of too stinky here. So I'm not gonna use that. I'm just gonna make the ground on the relay longer. Sorry, this guy. This guy's gonna be longer. It's about the right gauge. Um, and I'm gonna put a T connector on this and I'm gonna hook it up to the uh, ground on the high beams. So when I throw that on, it's gonna make ground and this whole thing is gonna be a beautiful thing. 85 is my little red power wire going to the cab. It's no longer going to the cab. Um, that is it right here. That's the guy right there. And now what we've got going on, so that's gonna be hot. Um, 30 is the usual, It's nothing's changed there. It's going to your battery, 12 volt. Um, and the 86, now, if you look at 86, is your ground. If I can f so that's your ground. So, um, and again, they're all getting together. So when that ground ground's activated by your high beam switch on your headlights, it's gonna throw this stuff into action. So here's what's going on. Um, hopefully you get this. Um, maybe I'm not explaining it too well, but I'll try my best. So basically now the switch um, has full-time power and it's, they're both hooked up, right? They're both going in there, power's on both of them. And there is your ground. So when the ground hits this guy, that's the contact that turns the light on. I'll pull the ground off. Obviously, that's how it works. 
So that's how your headlights work on the GX, uh, Lexus, Toyota, Subaru, and all kinds of other vehicles. So now we're just gonna go in here and we're gonna tap that. So these lights are pretty heavy. I saw a guy on Instagram mounted some spots. Uh, maybe there were floods, but they were a lot smaller. This is not the way I would do it. I would put some kind of structural something underneath. Like I said, there's nothing under here for about good 10 inches. Um, so this is just plastic. It is pretty rigid, but I think these guys are going to be too heavy for it and it's going to be vibrating around again guys i just need these for my commute my commute now is about 1200 kilometers um, and i need these going through the mountains so i'm going to put these on here temporarily um, basically the uh, other problem the other problem with these um, is these the slope of this bumper um, it's not going to let me level these lights out they're going to have to come up more like this um, and there's just not enough adjustment in these to compensate for this bumper slope. So I got a couple shims I've made up, I'm gonna stick in there. So with each new hole, this thing becomes softer. So again, guys, um, I might put a little gusset under here, um, under the bumper, just to try and help support it. But this is not ideal in my opinion, but will work for a month or so. This is interesting to some of you. This, uh, somebody uh, mentioned in the comments that this Lexus um, brush guard, this factory brush guard, if you can call it that, is kind of collectible. Back to the project. Um, so this guy, each bracket comes with three nuts and bolts. And I don't know if I'm going to put it in there because, you know, the more holes I put in this bumper, the softer it's going to be and the more it's going to vibrate and, and so on. And I still have to put a three quarter inch hole through here to pass the power wires uh, for each light through. So we'll see how that goes. We'll see how tight I can get these. As long as they stay square, um, we should be good. So I've got both brackets on. I had put that one on backwards. I don't know if it matters or not, but anyway, they're both on. And now I'm just going to square them up. Basically, depending on your brackets, to line these guys up, these have to be the right distance this way on the bumper. You know, if one's skewed in there and the other one's out here a little bit, this, uh, what I'm going to show you, isn't going to work. So as long as these are in the same spot, and they're, they're pretty darn good, they're close enough for me, um, you're going to line them up. Now you can put the lights on because the lights have that, you know, squared off face. Um, and then you can put a straight edge along the lights. But my brackets are the same, um, so I'm gonna put a straight edge along here. And you can't really see it, but this one needs to come in like that, so it's flush on the board. This guy needs to come in like that, so it's flush on the board. And now once these are totally lined up, that's square to your vehicle, they're pointing straight. So I snug these guys up, they're pretty tight, but I'm gonna drop another screw, uh, nut and bolt through here, uh, just one, just to keep it uh, square where I've got it. So there you go. I've got them all in everything squared up and nice and uh, Again guys, I, I don't think this is uh, you know, if there were smaller lights, maybe that would work, but I'm not uh, I'm not all in on this, but again temporary and right now they're they're pretty solid I did end up putting a little gusset in the back there. I don't know if it helps or not um, This is kind of where you need the structure to stop it from doing this, but this is what it is. All right, so this is what you do next. Um, once you've got these squared on the front, we're, we're gonna level these. So again, this depends on your load too. If you're gonna have a couple hundred pounds in the back normally, um, then level it with that. Right now, this thing's empty, but I will have a couple hundred pounds in it. So I might angle these a little bit down, and when the load's in the back, it'll bring it back up. But that's pretty much the concept right there. So there they are, they're on, and my next deal is I've got to get this guy down through that bumper, which is obviously easy to do here because it's plastic, but it's a big uh, connection here, it's three quarters of an inch. So I'll drill that out, and I got a couple rubber grommets that I'll put in just to clean it up. Got Mr. Grommet in there on both sides, and uh, yeah, see what this thing looks like. So they look pretty good, and that's how you set up a ground uh, switched or ground sided uh, light setup. Um, if you want to tap into an existing headlight, um, you got to use that negative. And uh, you know what? They look pretty good. This is the seven inch aux beam and I did a unboxing a few months ago of these guys and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. They look pretty good. I don't know how much they're going to vibrate around. It could be nasty. I don't know. Again, this is temporary, but for where, what I'm doing, I'm, I'm heading back and forth into BC quite often and the commute's uh, pretty wild going through the Rockies and you want to light up um, as much as possible at night just because there's moose, there's elk, there's all kinds of stuff running around. So these will be great, and it depends on your part of the world if this is legal or not. Um, you might not um, want to hook them up to your high beams. I like the idea because there's not another switch there. Possibly to get around this is if you have kind of crappy high beams 
you just take, unplug the bulb from your car and just run those as high beam or run all four. It's up to you if you're off road or whatever else. Uh, but these will definitely work for me. And again, this setup is temporary for me. The lights aren't, I'm gonna use those for sure. But I've got a new bumper coming, hopefully in the next month or two. And I wanna thank um, Mr. Taylor, you know who you are. He left something, uh, a comment in the comments about a great bumper, great looking bumper. And I agree, that's uh, one of the best GX 470 bumpers out there. And he is a local countryman, or he's pretty close to me anyway. And they're called Red Dog Fabrication. So I've got one of those on order and I can't wait to install that bad boy. It's gonna look awesome. It takes the whole bumper here, right to here. Um, and it's just a really nice setup. It's gonna, you know, obviously have a winch on it and the whole thing. And those guys will be going too, those uh, running boards. And it's starting to look good. Get some tires on there in the summer and away we go. Anyway, thanks for watching and happy new year. And let's see what 2022 brings. Yeah, that should do it. <laughs> Thank you.